Hi, my name is Zach Riley, and over the next few videos, we're going to discuss regenerative agriculture. Regenerative agriculture is not a new concept. In fact, many people refer to it as just good old fashioned farming. However, it's a way of farming that puts soil health at the core of farm management. In this video, we're going to discuss how to keep the soil covered. Keeping the soil covered can help to protect your soil from erosion, and it can also help your soil um, to be a bit more insulated, preventing it from very cold temperatures or even from drying out in a drought. Keeping your soil covered can be achieved a number of ways, and most commonly it's by either using a living mat or a dead mat of plant material on the soil surface. The dead mat of plant material is often achieved by using chopped straw residue um, after harvest. However, achieving a living cover has many more benefits, such as increasing water infiltration and holding on to nutrients to prevent them from leaching. Many people will be aware that growing cover crops in Scotland is quite a challenge. However, we visited one farmer who is managing to grow cover crops consistently in the northeast of Scotland. Okay, I'm Ross Mitchell. Uh, I farm here at Castleton Farm in the Howe of the Mearns. Uh, we farm 1,200 acres. We grow predominantly soft fruits, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries and cherries. And then in our arable rotation, we grow wheat, uh, beans and spring barley, all in a regenerative uh, system. So I'm a member of the Farming for a Better Climate Soils group, where we actively uh, are looking at all the different principles of regenerative agriculture, mainly fo focusing in on soil health and how we can improve uh, the soil to make it work better for ourselves. We're protecting our soils uh, by growing cover crops in all our land that's destined for spring drilling. So we're broadcasting uh, into the previous standing uh, cereal crop, a cover crop, which will be at least a three or four species mix. Um, and that gives us um, soil armor, something that's um, basically a living root in the ground all winter, above ground biomass that'll uh, soak up all the nutrition from the previous uh, cereal crop. And then after that has been desiccated and uh, sown into in the spring, that'll be released and we'll get the benefit of that nutrition in the following crop. The cover crops for me was as part of the regenerative farming principles, it ticks three of the boxes, which is the living root, the uh, soil cover, and also it's allowing us to introduce livestock onto the farm. So one of the principles is, is that introduction of livestock on a predominantly arable farm that's not always easy to do. But because we're growing this above ground biomass that is then attractive to be grazed all winter, we're getting a different uh, microbial action by introducing livestock through the winter to graze off the cover crops. So it really, for me, the, the principles of what we're trying to do with the regenerative agriculture um, cover crops ticks three of the boxes. Um, so it was really something that we wanted to make work uh, and a great addition to the farm. So as well as growing the cover crops, um, we're chopping all our straw um, which gives us a, a mat of material, which gives us soil armour. It protects us uh, through the winter months uh, from any extreme weather events. It gives the microbes something to work on, start breaking down, keeps the soil alive and active and working uh, all winter long. We're managing to successfully establish cover crops uh, by going in early into the previous standing crop. Uh, and we're, so we're gaining a couple of weeks, so we're broadcasting 30, we've built a 30 metre broadcaster, broadcasting um, in at least two, three weeks before harvest, and that gains us that time advantage which we're missing here in the northeast of Scotland. I think if we waited till the previous crop was harvested before uh, going in to establish it, then that would uh, not allow us enough time to get enough growth of both above ground biomass and to get the roots really down active and working. So I think the, the broadcasting has really worked. The other great advantage is it's much cheaper, um, so it's a cheap establishment method um, to establish the cover crops rather than going in with a drill to sow them. Cover crop establishment can add so many benefits um, to a traditional farming rotation. I think we have um, gone into a little bit of monoculture um, cropping, whereas the cover crops add that diversity. There's multiple species of different uh, crops growing in their cover crops, so that gets the microbes um, and everything in the soil more active and working all winter uh, when normally a lot of soil in this area is ploughed over and is basically dormant in, in, in a state that's not active. Keeping the soil active all the time is one of the key principles and part of what we're trying to do 
um, with the system. The other thing is the, the, the cover crop is basically our cultivation. So it's opening up the soil, it's making it more porous, it's letting the water infiltrate away in the winter. It'll allow it to dry out in the spring and by keeping the soil structure in place. So the roots are doing the job of the cultivation for us. Other farmers, I think I'd really encourage them to uh, try cover cropping uh, on overwintered stubbles um, rather than having lots of bare uh, fallow fields that are not alive, not working, um, or even, you know, turned over ploughed land that is then not active in the winter. I think if you grow some cover crops actively, get out there with a spade, have a dig, and you can see that the soil is alive all winter, um, and it's then benefiting um, you. You know, soil health is key and important to all uh, sustainable farming systems. So I think I would encourage any farmer to go out there and try it, even if it is then going to be cultivated in. I think I would uh, definitely encourage uh, farmers to actively try growing some cover crops over winter cereals.